I'm Joseph Franzelli, a Komori missionary, a bishop in uh, northern Uganda, the Diocese of Lira. And I've uh, been there now for seven years, uh, just uh, with the transition period from the end of the uh, Lord Resistance Army uh, program, the phenomenon of the IDP, Internal Displaced People Camps, when I went to my diocese, one third of my people were in those camps, thousands of people on top of one another, uh, confined there, not being able to do any work because there was curfew, there was insecurity and so on. And then after that uh, long tunnel uh, of darkness, the light of uh, peace, although the uh, peace talks didn't bring the uh, result which we were hoping. I remember when I went to, to Juba for the signing of the, of the peace talks, that's when uh, Cohen, Joseph Cohen didn't turn up and uh, refused to, to, to sign. He went to go back and eventually things uh, went wrong once again. But now uh, we are definitely uh, living a period of uh, relative peace and welcome peace and very much desired peace, uh, which is though uh, faced with the challenge of reconstruction. I'm talking about the uh, whole region of northern Uganda, particularly uh, in my, my own uh, diocese, 12,000 uh, square kilometers, uh, the Lamo tribe. Uh, uh, although the situation is very much the same and even worse with the, the Acholi tribe, and the, the, the archdiocese of uh, Guru. Uh, we are faced, as I was, I was saying, with the challenge of reconstruction, which is not just, of course, the material one, which is understandable because things have been abandoned, and looted, uh, burnt, and whatever, from houses to churches to, to uh, the fields of the people, the crops, and so on. Uh, but uh, together with the material reconstruction, there is, of course, the even more difficult construction of, say, the a moral, a psychological reconstruction of the, of the people, even their own, uh, I would say, moral fiber, is it, if I could say so. I'm thinking of my people, the Lani, who are, uh, you know, have got their own dignity, they are uh, happy to, uh, and proud to work for them, to, to, to support their family and so on. But then the experience of living in the, in the camps for so many years, and just waiting for people to, dish, di, to be dished out to them uh, once a month and so on, has uh, uh, really uh, taken a toll. And the same again, the experience of violence, violence which they suffered and violence which also they, they've been uh, committing uh, against others, has uh, left a, a population which is definitely traumatized. I'm not talking only the, of the people, uh, the, the, the child soldiers, or the people who have been uh, maimed and raped and so on, but uh, everybody has lived a situation of violence. So this also needs to be uh, taken care of. And it will take, I'm afraid, a couple of generations before uh, people can uh, get over it. And, uh, uh, I don't know, a young man or a young girl who has seen uh, or his own parents being uh, killed or, or the mother raped and so on, uh, may think of a positive relationship between a man and a woman, uh, forming a family, uh, taking care of children and so on. So that's, those are the challenges uh, uh, of, uh, of the reconstruction, uh, which are taken care of by the many kinds. Uh, and uh, which have been also the object of uh, uh, the purpose of the intervention of so many NGOs, both local and international NGOs and organizations. Although, of course, uh, I must say that when the conflict was on, there were many more of them, even too many. Eh? When uh, the conflict was the conflict was over, well, you know, then uh, the post-conflict is no longer news. So many of them went away. And uh, there's still uh, quite a few left, uh, but how to handle it and how to uh, go about the whole process of uh, reconstruction is where I think that 
uh, we are now finding it difficult. Not only personally, I as a uh, pastor of a, a shepherd of, of the local church in India, but even I see uh, people come out with a good intention of helping, like NGOs and so on, international organizations as well, and of course, first of all, even the government itself with its uh, plan of reconstruction, development, and so on. What uh, I can see is that together with the great hope and the desire of people to start afresh, to, to really, you know, even if, even if everything, many things have been historical, we are going to, to make it and we want to uh, change, uh, there are ways in which things are done which are not leading towards that. In fact, they are leading towards a certain fatigue, which is no longer the fatigue of the donors, the donors' fatigue in pouring in money into something which apparently doesn't bring uh, good results, but it is also somehow the fatigue of the wearing out of, of, of uh, the hope and the conviction of people that are we going to make it. Why? Because some of the problems which I see and experience personally at church level in the organization of the diocese, but also which I see the social uh, uh, field in, in, in our society, is that there's too much fragmentation. Many people are present, but each one doing his own thing. And uh, it looks at times, unfortunately, that what is more important is for that NGO to be able to present an account, uh, a report of so many things done and so on, the money was well spent and so on, and again so that we get more money for another project. Rather than uh, seeing how this thing, which is also important, and then how can it continue? And how can we, you know, there, I know that there have been a lot of uh, workshops for capacity building, which is definitely uh, what is even more needed than, than money itself as such. We need people who are able, who, who, who get the skills of how to help themselves and so on. But so many uh, capacity building workshops have been carried out and so on. And then you look around and say, hey, what are the results? Often the results are not there. Why? Well, I mean, the reasons, of course, I don't want to oversimplify things. But definitely, one of the things that there is lack of uh, synergy, lack of uh, uh, coordination. Uh, uh, among the different actors in, in this process of, uh, of uh, reconstruction at all levels. No? Uh, national, or well, actually district level, first of all, because uh, the, the, the place is uh, divided into district and counties, right? But also at national level and then international level. Uh, even if you take the ministries, no? each ministry has got its own program and so on, eh? but it, it, there's a little link, or it, the link is not so really apparent eh? uh, and conducive to results with what the other ministry is doing, maybe in the same uh, territory, more or less at the same time, and often with the same people who are called a, 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 a time, they spend their time going from one course, one workshop to the other. What is seems not to, to, to take place is that uh, this thing don't have a grip uh, really on the, on the a grassroot, and there is not enough continuity, not enough synergy of the different actors for this thing to, 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 to bear fruit. I shouldn't forget uh, that the lack of uh, adequate success, uh, I, I wouldn't like to say lack of success, of adequate success, uh, taking into account the amount of money uh, poured into this project and so on uh, is also due to some uh, factors which are there on the ground and which make things more difficult. One thing uh, which is known, of course, is the pandemic of uh, AIDS, HIV AIDS, which is there and which indeed uh, still goes on cutting down the life of so many people. Maybe the very people that we have uh, sent for uh, the, the capacity building thing is something. Now they've learned something there, but uh, their condition uh, doesn't allow them to, to, to be productive and actually they, uh, they, they get lost, right? So that is a, a, a one big uh, challenge. But then there is something which is even more insidious according to than AIDS, and that is the corruption. The moral uh, loss of values, uh, 
by which, due to the experience of the past, uh, people learn that uh, have seen, have witnessed so much, so so often that the one who's got a gun is right, whether it gets the because he can get the, the bicycle of, of his neighbor, or the wife, or the money, and so on, and nobody can tell him a, a, anything, right? Or, now, it is no longer done with a gun, but if you are in power, if you have got uh, this, uh, you are a civil, uh, you know, uh, officer, or, or uh, you are in, in authority, you can do practically anything. And it's very difficult for people to uh, come on and uh, ask for their rights uh, to be respected, and so on. So, that, uh, Com makes corruption even easier and uh, rampant. It's really a, a toll there. So. And, uh, and this somehow uh, takes away the, the erodes the hope of people. It has been going on for so long, and there have been so many uh, proclamations of uh, anti corruption campaigns and so on, and then when somebody is got offended at this. And you the police, you see walking away after a few, uh, a few months or even days, and particularly if it's somebody high in government or so, and then nothing is done about it, so that people uh, really uh, lose hope. And therefore, each one uh, is tempted to think that he's entitled to do what he can to uh, grab his own uh, money, to care for himself, uh, irrespective of the rights of the others. This is a very, I mean, it's quite widespread. And the worst part of it is that people uh, tend to accept it as normal. Who am I? Am I the only stupid uh, or, uh, to, uh, to refuse a bribe? Am I the only one uh, when everybody is doing it and so on? So, corruption is indeed a, a virus eh, which is uh, eroding the, the possibility and the chances of a success of all these plans for the reconstruction of, uh, of, the, uh, the, of, of Northern Uganda. Uh, of course, uh, this applies to both government, uh, local authorities. Uh, I would like to say that even uh, NGOs and international bodies at times uh, in order to do things, they are ready to compromise and pay this, something to this, something to that, and so on. And uh, this has also uh, brought in something which is, from a, also from a human and Christian point of view, is very sad. It looks as if in nowadays, uh, I wouldn't say nobody, but very few people uh, in Northern Uganda are ready to do something for nothing, like to say. And I think that this is a, an unwanted, indirect, but a real uh, consequence of the presence of so, so many NGOs with uh, plenty of money, who would pay uh, enormous uh, I mean, amount of money uh, to their drivers. So that I, I remember I, I saw uh, teachers leaving their teaching profession uh, and queuing up to, to get a, a, a a job as a driver of an NGO because they're getting much more money for that. So now people go where they, there is money, and without money, uh, nothing is being done. There is something which I really regret and resent when people talk about, you know, uh, this, an initiative and so on, but is there any motivation? Uh, is motivation, facilitation, motivation? And motivation means money. Even the, the, the even that the English word has been distorted somehow and corrupted, what motivation, what moves people now is money. Without money, they will not do it. And the more money, then the more uh, people will be ready to do to the things. And that's where, I mean, from my point of view, as a Christian also, that's where the work of evangelization is a moral reconstruction, spiritual uh, values uh, to be upheld uh, is uh, needed even more now than, than before during the time of, of war. If you think and you keep in mind that the majority of the people in Uganda at large, but also in, the, in northern Uganda, are young people, then you can choose. You can either look at things one way or the other. You can be discouraged, thinking that, hey, 
uh, these uh, young people, where are they going to? There is no uh, future uh, ahead for them, really. Even those who can go through the through uh, education, if they are successful and they uh, have enough money to pay for their school fees, there is no job for them afterwards, right? And then they are just frustrated at the source. Uh, uh, they are easy prey of politicians who pull them one side or the other. Or you can look at uh, this being true, uh, partly. Eh? There's also the other way of looking at, at, at things. Say, well, but there is, you know, there is a the generations of older Ugandans who have gone through all this uh, violence and so on. They've tried their way, they failed to, you know, Uganda is going to celebrate 50 years of independence this year in October. A lot has been achieved. But a lot has been also lost, plenty of blood for nothing, for the fight between one group and the other. Maybe some of these older people have really already lost hope. Eh? You know. So I prefer to look at the younger people as a, a, a potential, a, a group of people who, in spite of the difficulties, particularly if they are really uh, given reasons for it, if they are talk to, if they are put together, if they are organized and motivated not by money but by ideals and values, I hope that the young people, the younger generation will be able to make a change. And then we shall indeed reconstruct, rebuild uh, Uganda to be what is meant to be, what it is, the pearl of Africa.